Hey guys, it's Don Beltrami from Wazell Properties and it is Tuesday, so that means this is the Tidbit Tuesday video. And today I'm with Ray Basinger from House to Home Inspection and we are gonna talk about the importance of having a home inspection done and why buyers should have a home inspection. It's really important that you never, if possible, unless you're in a crazy market, give up that right to have a home inspection done on a home that you're purchasing. Now, Ray and I have been working together for a long time, um, so we have a great relationship and he has helped many of my clients. And the thing that I really like about Ray is that he's not a fear monger, he doesn't scare my buyers, um, but he's really honest and he really lets my buyers know the things that they should be looking for and the things they should be concerned about. So that's really important when you pick out an inspector to make sure you have somebody that's knowledgeable, that has experience, but also is not going to be making it where it's so fearful for you to purchase the home. So Ray, you and I have been doing this for a long time and I just wanted to meet with you so we can talk about the importance of a home inspection but maybe also we can kind of walk around this house. It is a newer built home by D.R. Horton here in Foster Ridge. Um, and tell us some things that maybe we should be looking out for or things that are really good about this home that's a really positive. And then if you see it, that's a good thing. If you don't, maybe you should be asking why. And then questions maybe that buyers should be asking their inspector when they interview the inspector, why they should pick that inspector or maybe what could be red flags for them to maybe try to maybe pick another inspector. Okay. Absolutely. Sounds so great. let's start from there. Introduce yourself, tell everybody about yourself, how long you've been doing this, and we'll start from there. Okay. I'm, I'm Ray, uh, owner of House to Home Inspection. Um, I've been doing this about 11 years. Um, I have an engineering degree. I have two other inspectors, so we usually can get the inspections done pretty quickly for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, and we, you have your inspection reports back to everybody within 24 hours is always in my yeah, experience, we, right? We, we send our inspection, we pride ourselves on sending our inspection the same day as the inspection. Okay, And, awesome. and, we're, and we're one stop shop. Also, we, we can do any inspection you want. We have pool guys, we have termite guys, we have bulkhead guys, water well, septic tank, whatever you need. And that's a really good point. That is something I'm really glad that Ray spoke about because that is really easy for the buyer. When you call Ray, I'm gonna tell you if you're my client or your agent should be telling you what you're gonna need, what inspections you're gonna need. Home inspection, termite inspection, if you're buying land, a property on land, a well inspection, a sewer inspection, a foundation, you don't need foundation inspections, but you check the foundation, we, we, can, we can give you the elevation of a foundation. We, we measure it with the same tools as the foundation guys. We okay. use the zip level, which is... Right, which is what they use, right. yeah. So that's really important because then you can just make one call, he'll line everything up on the day that you're gonna be doing the inspection and you don't have to worry about it. So that's that's one, another reason why my clients have really liked working with you is they just call you and then you take care of everything. Right, Perfect. right. And we get everybody there at the same time so it's not inconvenient for the sellers. Right. And it's very convenient for the buyers. Correct. Because they get to talk with them at one. Exactly. And you're a specialist in every area. Exactly. Yeah, you're not doing termite inspections. You're not doing those things. You're, you're just focusing on the home and then the other people focus on... Right. I do what I'm best at and let them guys do what they're best at. Exactly. And the yeah. same as when you pick out a real estate agent and you ask me loan questions. I can't answer that. I'm not a lender. But my lender can answer those questions because that's his expertise and it's the same. I can't answer inspection questions. I'm going to refer you to Ray. Right. <laughs> So tell us some things that's like, when you first walk into a home, what are the first things that you look for on, on an inspection? Like, what's, where do you start at? When I pull up to the house, I look at the exterior of the house. And you can usually tell if the homeowners are prideful in the house. Yeah. If they, if you can tell right away if, if their yard's maintained and uh, just what's laying around the house, if, they're, if the house is gonna be in, taken care of. Yes. So that's the first thing I look at. And then uh, I usually make a few laps around the house looking okay. for compromised windows, high uh, mulch on the foundation, just simple things like that. We and why is that a compromise having high mulch on the foundation? Th that is very conducive for moisture intrusion and wood destroying insects such as uh, termites. Okay, because I get that a lot. I think almost in every section you've done for me, that happens, we right. see that. But isn't that mostly because usually people who are having landscapers, they just throw like the mulch. They're not really worried about 
the negative of what they're doing. They're just doing it quickly and having it done. Right. Then, should the home buyer, homeowner, should they be pushing that back? They should regulate the the landscapers. The landscapers come and they just throw mulch on top of mulch. It looks like the house is sinking, but really the mulch is getting higher. Right. And it's something uh, that needs to be solved early on because you can't just rake it back because it'll create a negative drainage towards the house. Oh, it all okay. has to drain. So the 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 what you want from a house as far as grading and drainage is you want uh, the, the grading to drop about six inches in the first 10 feet away from the house. Okay. So it runs away from the house. So, okay. So that's a really good point. It's not just so easy to rake it away. Like Ray said, you want to make sure you're keeping that drainage. So in the next heavy rainfall, you're not having that rain go into your foundation. You're having the rain go away from the foundation. Right. Towards the drainage areas. Yeah. So that's really important. So what, how did it, Jump back to the very beginning a little bit before we get more into the inspection. One thing I forgot to ask you is you have an engineer degree, but are you certified by track or how do you get a license to be an inspector? We take our classes with track and then, then you have to pay, uh, pass a state exam and a national exam. So like a real estate agent. Like a real estate agent. Okay. And then you have to do continuing education 32 hours uh, every two years for inspectors. Okay. And do they require inspectors to be an engineer? Or do they no. require, so there's no requirement. It's just like an agent, you just have to take the classes and the continuing education. Right, right. Okay. You don't have to have an engineering degree. It, it's a plus if you do have one because you understand the structure of the house and how like the load bearing walls and such. So do buyers ever ask you if you have an engineering degree? They or? Do. Oh, awesome. And some realtors use me because of that. Okay, so that's a really good point for you to think about is maybe a question to ask an engineer. Um, what is your educational background, not just your licensed education background, but what's your education background? Right. And you're also fingerprinted, correct? Yes. We're, we're and your background check. Yes. Yes. That's something that's really important that a lot of buyers don't think about. You need to be asking your inspector, and so should the agents, but you should be asking your inspector, are you licensed and have you, and do, are you licensed? Have your fingerprints been done and do you have a background check done? And is your license active? Just yes. like a real estate agent, is your license active? Yes. Because you don't want somebody going into a home that isn't licensed active, doesn't have a background check, and is not fingerprinted. I mean, exactly. you just you want to know who you're working with. Exactly. Yeah. And, and track requires that you also have insurance and they won't issue your license. Oh, okay. And the minimum required for insurance for an inspector in Texas is $100,000. I carry about $300,000 worth okay. of insurance. So okay. um, it's just, just in case. Yeah, you, I mean, you absolutely. Just in case. We all should be covered. Right. So you get, so let's go back to the house. So you pull up to the house, you look at the exterior first, see if there's any wood rod or, like what you're right. saying, drainage issues or. The care of the home is right. there chip not chip paint but you know bad paint coming off right. things like that okay so when you come into the home where do you start inside the home i every inspector has a different uh routine that they do mm -hmm. mine happens to be i start in the kitchen okay. and i do every house the same okay because that way you won't miss anything exactly you have a routine you start i go to the kitchen i go to the breakfast room or dining room in this room 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 and then work my way up into the attic and do the, the hvac last okay and then what are you looking for in the kitchen since really the kitchen is the heart of the home let's kind of answer some questions about what are you looking for in the kitchen what should buyers be concerned about and what should you know they be aware of uh, something they can do really quick open the dishwasher and see if all the racks are rusted and inside the dishwasher is rusted. Look under the sink and see if there's been leaks under there. Mm -hmm. You know, when I get I get it in a little more in depth, I right. have a microwave detector and I'll check the microwave for a good pattern in it. Correct. Run the ovens and make sure that they're accurate with thermometers. Okay. And then I run a lot of water through mm -hmm. both sides of the sink just to see if I can find a leak. A lot of times, if you look into the garbage disposal too, you'll notice that they're all rotted out. They spin and they sound okay, but if you look at them, they're not really doing their job. Okay, okay. So. And those are things that buyers can do when they're even, when you're coming into the home, opening up that dishwasher, yeah, kind of just absolutely. seeing the love and care that a homeowner has to the home. You and I have been into some homes that were, yeah, <laughs> woo! There was no love. <laughs> no love, no love at all. And then you got into homes and you think, wow, these people really have cared about their home. Right. Yeah. And that's something for you as a buyer should really know too, is that once you purchase that home, your care for that home really begins that day. 
You need to be having your maintenance checks on your ACs. You need to be having your maintenance checks on, you know, air, filter. elf, air filters, exactly, yeah. water heaters, anything yeah. like that. Um, these are things that you have to do because when you go to resell your home, right. Ray is going to be seeing what you haven't been doing. But if you keep that and maintain it the course of the time that you have the home, then your inspections go fairly smoothly. Right. You know? yes. Talk about deficiencies. So on a lot of the home inspections we get, um, there's always a lines where it says, it says, what are the three categories again? It's deficient. Uh, inspected, not inspected, deficient, not present. Okay. So I see deficient a lot on that. And a lot of times it's because of age of the home and not up to code. So can you explain what deficient means? Is that a is that a don't buy the house because there's a deficient or what does that really mean? Deficient means that it doesn't meet current requirements or some aspect of that that object or item does not meet, but it, it in no way means that that item is bad. Okay. So so if I see the foundation and it had a post tension cable slab and one of the ends were sticking out, I would say, hey, the foundation is deficient, but it's not really the foundation, it's just a cable. Right. So when you look down through here and say foundation is deficient, that, don't be scared, look at what the deficiency is. What the deficiency yes. is, okay. So um, when you talk about code, does a house have to be up to code for it to be a really good home or are there really good homes where you have tons of deficiencies but the home is totally sound, totally structured, everything is fine. Is that is that true? Yes, that's very true. The uh, uh, A lot of the houses, unless they're brand new, there's going to be something because the code, uh, you know, the codes change constantly. Right. So the big thing that you're, you see all the time is AFCI breakers. Yes. Arc fault circuit interrupts. They changed the code in 2003, they changed it in 2010. So unless if the house is older than 2010, it's probably not going to meet, meet code for a breaker panel, but it's still fine. You don't have to upgrade it. Right. It's still fine, right. but you as a licensed inspector have to note that it's deficient because it doesn't have that because current code requires it. Right. I'll say current requirements require this to be in there, but at the time this house was built, it was not required. Okay. But it doesn't mean that there's something wrong with the electric. No. Yeah. Not at all. Okay. So. so and talking about the electrical uh, box, one thing that we see a lot, Ray and I, in our inspections, and in his inspections, me, I'm just following along, um, is the oxidized case around the cables there in the electrical box. Maybe we can show a picture of that. We'll go out and look at right. the electrical, if we can get into it in this one, yeah. um, where you can show that. What is that oxidized case used for? So, so 90% uh, of the houses have aluminum service coming from the power pole outside line into the breaker panel. So aluminum oxidizes with just uh, humidity and, and right. you know. Uh, so with the oxidization, it could build a, a resistance in the electrical line. So they put the paste on there to keep it from oxidizing. Okay. And copper does not require it. Okay, so, so is it a safety issue if it's not there? Um, it can become a safety issue over okay. a long period of time, but okay. most of the time it's not that big a deal. Okay. So you finish with the kitchen, and then you're going to go into where? The bedrooms, bathrooms, where are you going to go? Most of the time I go into the, the room that's closest, and a lot of time that's the living room. So I'll be checking the fireplace and the uh, safety features of the fireplace. Okay. I and mean, if there's gas in there, a lot of times they require a damper stop, you know, so right. the gas can escape. Right. Um, also, in the rooms, I check every outlet to make sure there's no open shorts, grounds, reverse polarity, open neutrals, okay. whatever, a tool that does that quickly. Right. Uh, and then you're going to check the lights and the light fixtures and the fan balance and open and close all the windows. And part of opening and closing windows and doors is also checking the structural integrity of the house mm -hmm. and the foundation. Okay. If they don't work smoothly, you need to look further and see. And find out why. why. Sometimes it will be age. Or is it usually because of maybe the foundation is settled, or what's typically causing that? Um, on older houses, probably more than likely the windows have never been opened. <laughs> but on a newer house, uh, they should open s smoothly. And if they don't, you start looking in the corners of the windows to see if mm -hmm. the drywall cracks. Okay. Right. And, and then you look in the in the window frame and see if maybe there's moisture in there. So, okay. And then if you see moisture, you try to detect it and narrow it down. Okay. 
Um, and so after you've done all of the bedrooms and everything, then you go to the attic. And that's usually where a lot of the major concern is for buyers yes. is the attic, because that's where our water heaters are, that's where our ACs are, the furnaces are, right. all the duct work, all of that, the frame, the house, you can see all of that up there. So yes. and that's what are you looking for? Up there, I am looking for any roof leaks that I can see you know, from the walk mm -hmm. areas. Uh, make sure that most, a lot of times the water heaters up there, like you were saying, right. looking for rust on water heaters, bad connections, leaking water lines, make sure it has a shut off so you can service it. Okay. Uh, and the air conditioners, I'm gonna uh, do a Delta T differential right. to see right. if it's functioning right. Make sure it has a safety drain pan that it's not rusted. Okay. Uh, maybe that it has a, uh, a float switch. Okay. So if it does fill the water, it can turn, it'll turn it off. Okay. Um, and then I'm looking for the insulation, mm -hmm. the R rating of it. Right. The minimum here in Texas is R30. Okay. So a lot of houses, older houses, just won't meet. Right. Um, doesn't mean the house is bad, it's, it would be more efficient when more. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't mean that, that it's not cooling or heating properly. It would just be your electrical bills would probably be less or your heating bills would be right. less if you had that. Right. Um, the upgraded insulation. Right. Okay. Absolutely. And if it's below R30, then I'll say it's efficient. Okay. But, you know, it doesn't mean the house is bad. Right. Right. Bad insulation. Right. So. so, we talk about what a buyer should look for. I also think it's really important for sellers to know what they should be looking for before they list the home. And I, I always tell my sellers, remember that buyers look up. So, if you haven't replace that air filter that you can <laughs> see in the hallway and it's really dirty, you need to replace it, right? Absolutely. Because how what should you be replacing this every month, every the one the ones in the registers inside the house mm -hmm. once a month. The the big canister ones in the attic, they will last six months to a year depending on foot traffic and pets and that kind right, of Right, okay. Yeah, I think ours in our house, we have a 2015 home. Um, it's every six months. Right. And our our AC remote pad tells us, it pops uh, yeah. up and uh, says, time to change your filter. Right. Right. <laughs> it gives us a little red light, which is a nice thing. Um, and because I always think, I tell my sellers, when you can see those dirty air filters and even the screens that go over those air filters, if they're dirty, that's telling me what else are you not taking care of in exactly. this house. Exactly. Yeah. That's what we were talking about up front. You, you can tell the love that house is given by air filters and the outside. And just yes. And cleaning, and if you see a wood rot on the exterior of your home, mm -hmm. fix it. You right. know, cut it off. Usually when I have a contractor come in, they cut that piece off, they put a new piece of board there, they paint it, right. keep it painted, right? right. The, the wood, keep it painted, that helps also the wood rot. Absolutely. Okay, so those are things that sellers should be aware of too, is that we know that, you know, we're always, sellers are always fearful of the inspection being done by the buyers because they think that the inspectors are gonna tear apart the house and nitpick the house. But remember, if you are getting prepared to put your house on the market, Go through it and look at it as an inspector possibly would, or even consider having a seller's inspection done, which you guys do. We do that. Yeah. So you can do an inspection as a seller and have that done before you list the house. The only thing with that is, is if you find anything and you choose not to fix it, you do have to disclose it. Yes. And the best thing is, is just to put the inspection report that Ray has done or your inspector has done online with your listing so the buyers can see it. Right. So Ray and I are gonna go around, we're gonna, he's gonna show a couple of uh, parts of the house of maybe things to look for, and, um, and then hopefully that'll answer more of your questions. So Ray, let's do that, and then we'll okay. do a couple more questions, and then we're done, okay. So Ray and I are outside now, we're in the front of this home that we're at, and he is gonna to talk to you about drainage, what we talked about early, we're gonna show you a few things, talk about the gutters, and then um, be able to answer some of those questions for you as well. Okay, Ray. Hi, so uh, gutters are not code requirements. However, I call them deficiencies if, if it will affect the house foundation or the well-being of the house. Okay. And in this area right here, you can see that there's a, a very washed out area right in here. And that's because there are no gutters up in here. So a lot of water is coming right here and that's too close to the foundation. Okay. A lot of moisture close to the foundation can either heave the soil 
or it can wash it out. Okay. And this area too, if you look at this whole area, it's encased. So this moisture has no place to go. Okay. So it would be very beneficial to have a gutters here and have the water routed somewhere else. Okay. And have it routed away from the house and the foundation. the foundation. Having those rocks there, is that helping? Is that for termites? What's the purpose of having the rocks that there? Dis that disperses the water when you don't have gutters. It, it hits those and it doesn't splash up on the walls and get mud and, and growth uh, on the wall. Okay. That, that helps a little bit. But in this case, you can see since there's so much water coming from that roof, it's washing it out and then it's trapped in there. Okay, so Ray, this is something that comes up on every, almost every single inspection that we do. And Ray is gonna to talk to you about the corner cracks and we can see them. You can see right through here, this crack. These are cosmetic in most cases. They're uh, very common. It is not structural to your foundation. If you were to walk down this street, you probably every house would have it. I can see it on the next house from here. Okay. So um, when you're outside as a buyer and you're going through and you're looking at this, don't be alarmed by corner cracks. You just need to keep them sealed up with the concrete patch. And okay. It'll, it'll uh, uh, help save the integrity of the brick above it. Okay, okay. And because you want to seal it so that we don't allow any moisture to get into that, the crack gets worse or anything like yeah, that, right? Yeah, also termites will go in the back of that. Ah, okay. They, they only need like a paper thin area and they'll go in. And the, and the termite guy will tell you this too, he doesn't like corner cracks either because they can get into the structure there. Okay, okay, so. perfect. Okay, so something on the faucets right here that also always comes up on an inspection. Let's talk about that. So th this valve right here is basically a one-way valve it's called an anti-siphon device this will stop water from say you have a, a water hose running out here it'll it'll stop the water from going back into your potable water in your house it, if you had a water hose out here and it could siphon back through there it could come out at a sink it could come out okay anywhere okay and it would not be suitable to drink okay so those are very important to have so this is what you want to see on your yes, faucet that's what you want to okay. see on there and also have it wrapped so that if we do get the every once in a while freeze it's right. protected yes <laughs> So Ray, here we're gonna talk about the AC and a good point that you pointed out. So let's just tell the buyers what they could be looking for here with the AC. On the AC, AC's uh, condensers are uh, made to be on the exterior of the house. Mm -hmm. However, if you look at this one, there's no gutters or deflector above the uh, cooling condenser. So water continually drops into the top of that thing. Okay. So that could be a problem during a really heavy rain uh, it could go in there, it could degrade the wiring okay. and, and that kind of thing. And they're just not really made for just an onslaught of water over and Especially over. Especially in heavy storms or yes. something like that. Yes. So it's good to have that um, water reflector so it pushes it away from the AC yeah, and not the... it around it. Right. Or you could put a gutter and dump it, you know. Okay. Out. You can see that we're standing in this drainage area. You mm -hmm. need to get it into this drainage area. Yep. And here's the drainage area again that we were talking about earlier. You can see that this builder put a drainage area so the water goes out to the street. So we're gonna finish up our video. We really hope that we answered a lot of your questions. And if you have any further questions on a home inspection or would like to talk to Ray, don't hesitate to contact his office. We will put his contact information at the end of this video. And if you have any other questions about a home that you would like answered, please don't hesitate to put those questions below. We'll do a video on it. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and also on social media. Ray, is there anything in last words that you want to say to a buyer or a seller that's like a really good piece of advice for them? A really good piece of advice is number one, hire an inspector. And number one, ask questions about your inspector. Make yes. sure they're insured. Make sure they're licensed with track. And make sure they have a little bit of experience. Absolutely. So experience counts for everything. It does. And just because your um, real estate agent refers an inspector mm -hmm. or somebody to you, you should still be doing your own personal due diligence because this home, you're buying it. Your agent's not buying it, you're buying it, and you don't want to be left holding the bag because you picked out an inspector that doesn't have 
an engineer degree or an inspector that's only been doing this for a year. You want somebody who has experience. So I agree. Ask questions, interview your inspector, and know who you're hiring. Yeah, buying a house is a huge investment. Don't skimp on a few hundred dollars to save them. Absolutely. When buyers tell me they want to use the previous sellers or the previous buyer's inspection report that fell through, I'm like, no, you're getting your own inspection mm -hmm. because we want that inspector who's working for you to find problems, issues, if there are any. And if they're not, great, you found a house that didn't have any. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Awesome. So we will be back next Tuesday to answer any of your questions. And we thank you for joining us today. And have a great day and happy buying.